You are listening to Reels Movie Podcast. I am your host, Z. And before I get into this review, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, hit that bell for notifications, and you'll never miss a future episode. So for today's review, I'm going to be continuing the Blumhouse train as it releases yet another movie. This time we are talking about Ma. Remember, I will be talking about spoilers. So, listen to this review after you watch the movie. A lonely woman befriends a group of teenagers and decides to let them party at her house. Just when the kids think their luck couldn't get any better, things start happening that make them question the intention of their host. All the previews that led up to this movie had a lot of buzz around it and much uncertainty. Like, why is this woman going all crazy on these high school kids? It really has a lot to look forward to. Then the movie happens and you act like, okay, that really just happened. This is a very interesting movie with an amazing story and concept and one hell of a performance by Octavia Spencer. But the script, the script seems more like it was a rough draft than the final version, and you know what? They were actually happy with it. It honestly needed a bit more of a fine-tuning. The main girl, Maggie, played by Diane Silvers, is the first one to really realize that Ma is just going a little crazy, and she just tells her friends, saying, we shouldn't hang out at Ma's anymore. That's all she really does. They... Could have ended this pretty much right off the bat, but the script calls for the character's stupidity to happen and continue to move the movie along. It happens throughout the movie on multiple occasions, even by the kids' parents, but nothing happens and the movie continues to slowly pace along. Like I said, the story is very interesting. Ma actually has a history with the parents from two of the kids in the group and we get flashbacks throughout the movie she is an outsider in high school kind of like the nerd and she gets played a very cruel and embarrassing prank by luke evans character ben so she hatches this plan to get even with the parents it's a really cool concept like the kids pay the price for the parents mistake Similar to Freddy Krueger, but Ma isn't some supernatural being. She's actually a real person with a huge variety of drugs since she works in a vet clinic. Ma's character was the main focus of the movie, as it should have been, and it really the only one that we got any type of backstory around. The kids are just there, but for some reason, Maggie is Ma's main focus, but it's never really explained why she is the main target. It all just sudden happens. It is a real shame that this movie that has so much promise, but the screenplay honestly kills the movie. I'm talking about the screenplay in general, not the story. Story is great. It's just the screenplay in general. Outside of Octavia Spencer's performance, no one else really shined. Spencer had a lot of fun and brought some light to the movie. And like I said, the kids were just... There, Maggie was wooden. She had like a thousand yard stare that didn't even come close to playing up to the role of the final girl, if you want to say. I do have to say, I did like McKaylee Miller as Haley. She was a fun character. Obviously, anytime she had a chance to shine, she had that dark cloud of Maggie hovering over her. She never got really any type of great performance to kind of outshine Maggie's character. Then you get the most random cameo you could have think of, and it comes from Alice and Janney. Let me repeat this. Academy Award winner Alice and Janney. She plays Ma's boss at the vet clinic and just pops her head in and yells at Ma to stay off her phone and get back to work. And then she winds up dead that we don't even see. Yeah, she and Spencer both have been in previous works of director Tate Taylor, so it seems like it was kind of a favor for him, but it was just random as hell, and we never really got to see her outside of a few lines, but she was just there, and she dies. Now, I need to talk about this last act of the movie. It just kind of bothered me a little bit. It's not like a killing point or nothing. I just want to talk about it. 
Ma kills two of the main culprits from the plank and has all the kids where she wants them. They're all drugged in her basement and she's completely gone mentally and she's just ready to kill all the kids or do whatever the hell she wants with the kids. And Maggie's strapped in, just watching Ma torture her friends. She sews Haley's mouth shut. She burns a kid's stomach with an iron, knocks out a girl with an iron, stabs a kid in the stomach with a knife, and then she paints the black kid's face white. So literally, out of all of this, he's the one that got off as easy as you can get. Uh, after Maggie's mom saves the kids, Maggie stabs Ma in the back, and everyone's escaped. The place is on fire. We see Ma in the house as she goes upstairs. No effects of the stabbing. She acts like it was never happened. She legit no sells the stabbing like she's a Jason Voorhees or a Michael Myers. Then she goes up to her bedroom and lays with Luke Evans' dead body and just burns to death. It was a weird arc for her character. I mean, through the flashbacks, she is kind of in love with Luke Evans' character, Ben. But I think she kind of got past that when she killed him. That's like, you know, you don't mean nothing to me. But with how sinister her character was built with the killings and with how she, what she does with the kids and shrugging off being stabbed, I wasn't expecting her just to accept death. You know, I expect her to go full-blown crazy at the end, trying to escape and go after the people. But it just was a weird arc for me. I'm going to give Ma a C. Thank you for listening to this review of Ma. If you like this review, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications, and I'll see you later.